All right, today we're going to talk about splitting 835 remittance files using the uh, 835 splitter, which is part of our EDI utility toolbox. So there's actually two products in the toolbox that are very close, uh, close cousins as we like to call them, the 835 splitter and the 835 claims extractor. We're going to talk a little bit about what they do and how they do it and then do a very quick demo. Uh, the splitter and the extractor both take an 835 file and split it into some number of smaller 835 files based on a number of criteria. All of our toolbox uh, utilities follow the same three rules when we're making edits. First of all, we never change your original file. It stays intact. Instead, we make a copy of the file and we place that um, uh, optionally into a separate location, which we of course do encourage. The splitter, 835 file splitter, will take a file. In this example here, let's pretend we have one file with seven claims totaling $10,000 of payments. And we use some logic to break that into, say, three files. The, the uh, result will still have the same seven original claims all placed somewhere totaling the same $10,000. So the sum of the parts are going to equal the whole. The 835 claims extractor is a little bit different. It works on a different principle where we're just going to look for pieces of information to select claims from and grab certain claims out of a file. So we don't care about balancing the sum of the parts to the whole. In this case, we just want to grab you know, the three claims we want here and put them into a single file. Uh, methods for splitting. There's actually a couple. One is what we call a natural split. Whenever you have a file with multiple payees in it, multiple individual self-contained checks, if you will, or the ST to the SE uh, segments, or your payee level, uh, that will be your primary split. That will split on that actual um, STSE break. Uh, for files with single payees in it, where we're actually going to split up a check uh, into multiple pieces, we have a couple ways to do that. There's two canned routines. One is by rendering provider at the claim level. And another option is if you just need smaller files, we'll just uh, give you the option to uh, break it into uh, uh, smaller files based on the number of claims you want in a file or the number of files you want. Uh, the third option, uh, also for single payee uh, files, is a rules base. This is the most powerful. This lets you select um, how you want to split based on criteria you build into a rule set. And you, because you're setting your own rules, you'll have to have some knowledge of the EDI specification, the loops, the segments, the elements, etc. Or you need to use EMS, uh, phone a friend, as we like to say. And the question of to adjust or not adjust we'll cover in a second. Uh, methods for uh, claim extraction. There's only a rules-based option. Uh, there is no canned routines. Uh, and once again, you set your own rules, so you'll either need to know the spec uh, guidelines or use us. That's what we're here for. All right, let's take a quick look and uh, do a quick demo. All right, this is our EDI utility toolbox. There are 19 tools plus a custom tool that we'd like to display here uh, at the time of this recording. I'm also going to take a look at uh, some files in Windows Explorer here. There's a bunch of files in a folder called Splitter. There's also a folder called Completed Split Files that have uh, has nothing in it at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some splitting and we're going to put the result in that file there. So we're actually going to demo the splitter right now. So our 835 file splitter is this button second from the top right. Uh, not very sexy to start with. Before, before it uh, knows what to do, uh, it needs to know what it's looking at, what type of file it's looking at. So if we take a look at this file here, happens to be a multi-payee file. This is that natural split we spoke about. So you only have an option to split it at the payee level. But it does give you some file naming convention options. So you can put any one or more of these things into the actual file name uh, of the file you create. Very common to put your payee ID or NPI in most cases of the payee. You can also put you know, these other options as well. And we're also going to tell it where to put the completion. And we're going to put it in that folder called completed split files. So it analyzed it. It's a single payee file. It knows how many claims are in the file. And it happens to be 19 different payees in this file. So this natural split will create 19 self-contained 835 files. Mm -hmm. When I click OK, first thing it does after it does its work is present me this audit uh, window here. 
So here's the original file for the Happy Home Healthcare Corporation uh, with its 19 different payees in the file. And here's the amount of the check and whether or not there were any remit level adjustments or PLB segments for the EDI folks. And down here, here's the 19 different files that it created. So it created um, the file using the original file name plus uh, an accounter 1 through 19 to ensure that it's unique. Plus, I also told it to put the payee ID. In your cases, it would most likely be uh, the NPI. So at this point, we can print it out to hard copy if you wanted an audit trail, or we can just select OK. So if I go back to my uh, splitter and completed split files directory, I now have the, there's the 19 brand new self-contained, totally valid 835 files that we just created. Okay, I no longer need these, so I'm going to get rid of them. Now let's go back to our splitter and we'll try another type of file. Let's go and grab a single payee file. And again, we don't care what the naming convention is. We're not really uh, concerned with uh, extensions. We'll, we'll open up every file and determine what it is. Once again, same type of interface, um, but we get a few more choices here now. So we've analyzed the file, we've selected it. There's 148 claims in it, but there's only one payee. So we're actually going to be splitting up a, an individual check here. So here's our, our, our two canned options, either by uh, rendering provider or the number of claims in the file. So if you just want to make smaller files, you can scroll through or just type in what you want and tell it how many claims per file or how many files. It'll do the math. I'm going to select rendering provider for this one here. I happen to know there's three different rendering providers in that file. Now we're splitting up a single check. We're inventing a check, if you will, for each of the split files we create. So there's a couple options. Uh, this button here, do not adjust payments. What that will do is it will leave the BPR, you know, the payment segment with the check number and the check amount and uh, the PLB segment intact and it will bring it over in each of the files. So in technic uh, technically it will be an out of balance, you'll create out of balance files. Some people like that because it has a tie back to the original uh, un uh, unaltered 835 file. For those of us, myself included, who can't stand an unbalanced file, you can also force the check to be in balance by selecting this option here. So it will, it will generate a check amount that's equal to the sum of the paid amount of the claims and do a proper um, balancing. When you do that, the PLB segments or the remit level adjustments of, as they were, as it were, uh, what do you do with those? You're splitting up a check and by definition those particular segments don't have anything to do with the claims in the file so you can't really assign them. So what we do here is we do not extract them, we leave them off. We do create a balanced 835. Uh, most of the folks in the field don't have a problem with that because they have to deal with these PLB segments um, offline anyways, usually through the general ledger or some other kind of um, entry. And once again I'm going to put my completed split files in a separate location and I'm going to click OK. And just as before, we get a little audit window. In this case, there are no POB adjustments, so it was kind of a moot point here. But here's the amount of the original payee to County Hospital, Inc. And we created three files. We invented the check numbers, but the some of the parts do equal the whole. And we now have three files um, in that same directory. Let's go back and take a look at it. Oops, grabbed the wrong one. Uh, there it is there, completed split files. Now here's the three different with, and it also puts the rendering provider's ID in there. In your case, it'll be uh, an NPI in most cases. Now, get rid of these, and let's do one more. This time we're going to do um, the rules-based option. So I'm going to grab uh, a single payee file, same one in fact, and instead of my two canned options, I'm going to go to my rules-based option. Now I write these rules myself. Um, you can have as many as you want. And this requires uh, knowledge of the spec. So if I took a, a, let's take one that does CPT right there. Here's one, it's a rule called CPT that it was written. We're looking for um, all the files that have a certain, all the claims rather in the file that have a certain CPT code in it or, or certain CPT codes. And once again, same options apply. Now if I've written the rule, all I need to do is select it and select OK. 
but let me edit the rule to show you how these rules are built. In this case, we have uh, four different operations in the rule. And in this case, we're going right down to the service line level. You can do anything within the claim, pull any segment, any qualifier, any element, et cetera, and use conditions. So in this case here, I'm going to look for CPT codes, which can be found at the service line level, the SVC segment. Uh, the qualifier is an option. I'm going to be looking, uh, optional rather, I'm going to be looking in SVC01 and I'm going to be making a, a comparison. In this case I can make string, numeric, or date comparisons. But I'm going to make a string comparison. I'm going to say SVC01 contains, and here's, here's my value, I'm going to type in 80048. So we're going to find if it's got 80048 in SVC01, I'm going to grab that entire claim, not just the service line, but the entire claim, and I'm going to put it in a file. And this file ID is freeform text. It will do two things. It would, first, it determines what file it's putting it into. Um, so I wrote uh, 80048 with underscores. Just That'll put that in the file name. Uh, if I look down and look at the other three rules, they're very much the same with different codes. So if any time it sees a 74000, it's going to take that entire claim and put it into a file called 74000. So, so far I've got two options here. Uh, if it finds a 72128, I chose just for illustration purposes to put this in the same file as the first one. So it's going to put it into 80048. Same as this. So you can do that. So they don't all have to go to different files. Some of these multiple conditions can go to the same file. And uh, lastly, I just was throwing this in here for fun. I'm going to put it in a file called Dave. And you can continue on and on. And we do OK. And here's what happens with our audit window, our original file, just as we saw a moment ago. It found a bunch to put into 80048 file. And there's the dollar amount. It found some to put in 7400 here, um, 000, and not much, but a little bit there. And anything that it could not match, it takes all the leftovers, if you will, and puts it in a file called no match. Of course, you can rename that anytime you want. And if we go to our completed split files folder, we'll see now there's, there's the three uh, files that were created, the two that I could match, and then all the rest. And that is the 835 file splitter. Thanks for listening and any inquiries feel free to email or uh, call and we'd be happy to talk to you.